In this video, we'll be looking in depth at what you can do with the page builder in Acuro App Studio. Specifically, we'll be looking at working with building page components of various types and how you can lay them out on your pages. One thing you may have noticed right away is that there are several different color coded component types. The blue components are panels. These are used for laying out multiple other components in relation to each other and organizing the space on your pages. The pink are smart components, which are prepackaged with several individual components together to form a specific function and accomplish it more quickly. Finally, we have gray components, which are individual components for a specific purpose that you'll use one at a time. To build something on our page, we simply grab a component from the components menu and drag it onto our page workspace. Then, we can resize and reposition the component as we see fit. To start out, I'll add this button component. Every component has unique configurable properties associated with it. For example, you'll have different properties for a button than you would for a list view or a chart. The properties available to configure for your currently selected component are always shown in the bottom left window just below the component list. In this button component I'm using, for example, I can use the text property field to quickly assign text to display on the button. If I type hello world, I should see this reflected in our live preview to the right of the screen. I can also use the edit icon property here to add an icon to my button, like so. We just find the icon, choose it, and hit OK. Now, it's important to note that components like this button can be easily styled as well just by clicking the paintbrush to the top left of your workspace while the component is selected. I'll go ahead and change the button color here to green and you'll see that reflected in the live preview. Now, you may notice that even after some repositioning, the position that our button is in in the live preview may look slightly different than how we've laid it out in our app page workspace. This can be due to anchoring. Anchoring is an important aspect of the Acuro app builder, which allows you to make it so that components remain proportionally anchored to one side of your screen, which can help them adapt to different screen and display sizes. If you take a look at the components properties box in the bottom left corner again, you'll notice that the top and left checkboxes are checked for anchoring. This is the default for most components, but you're able to switch it as you see fit. For example, if we were to change these checkboxes so that the top and right were checked, we would see the button jump slightly, repositioning so that it's anchored relative to the right side of the page instead of the left. Another option you have is to specify how components will behave when working with pages that might be long enough to involve scrolling by the end user. For example, you can say whether a component will be in a fixed position and scroll out of the viewable area, or if it will follow along with the screen when scrolled. For example, if we drag another button into our app far enough down the page that we'll have to scroll to find it, we might want our first Hello World button to not scroll off of the screen when we move down the page. If we select the component, then click the fixed marker to the left of the workspace, it will now follow us along as the page is scrolled down. Next, let's talk about panels, which are used to group and lay out other components relative to each other. Let's go ahead and drag a panel onto the page, resize it, and then add a couple components to it. I'll make this panel into a large rectangle so that we have plenty of space to work with. Next, I'm going to add a couple of button components to our panel. Once they show up in our live preview and I move the panel around, you'll notice that the two buttons move with each other now because they're part of the same component panel. Panels are a really great way to save time when you're working with multiple components that you might want to reposition or edit together later on. A panel itself can be this transparent layout tool that's invisible to the end users of your app, or you can give the panel a color and look as well. If we click on the solid button next to the workspace, the panel will get a background in the preview, which we can style by opening up our style brush while the component is selected. We'll just check background color, then choose red. Admittedly, this isn't the prettiest panel we could have made, but you get the idea. Lastly, let's talk about stack panels, which are a type of panel that lets you easily lay components out in one component per row. Let's get rid of our panel we added previously, and then drag in a stack panel. 
When you add a stack panel at first, it might not look much different from a regular panel, but if you go ahead and start dragging components into a row in the stack panel, a new row will be created each time. We'll go ahead and drag in a button, for example. As you can see, the stack panel then automatically generates a new row for us to use for the next component. I'll drag in another button now. Just like before, we can add some text to our button, then reposition it within the panel. Another thing to note is that you can keep each row in your stack panel the same size, or drag them to make one row bigger or smaller than the others. You can also move around each row to reorder them as you see fit. When I do this, you'll notice that the two buttons instantly swap row positions on our live preview. Alright, let's kick things up a notch and add yet another component to our stack panel. In this case, let's add a list view component to one of our stack panel rows. When we do this, just like in any of the tutorial videos you might have watched, we'll be prompted with where we want to load data from. We'll choose a previously created collection that we set up before this tutorial video. Now you can see that the list view is displaying its items along with the buttons, which of course we can reorder as before. As you can see, we ran into a problem when we repositioned the rows as the button is now showing up in the middle of the list. This is because the row panel our list is sitting in is currently fixed and won't adjust based on the height of the components it contains. We can change this by quickly clicking the row panel the list view is in, then checking the auto size box in the component properties panel. As you can see, our stack panel row now automatically adjusts with the height of the list and the button shows up in the correct position after the list instead of in the middle of it. Before we wrap up this video, let's talk about the structure tab. At any time, you can view the structure of your current page's components in typical tree view fashion by minimizing the components window and expanding the structure one. Here, you can explore all components grouped by the panels they're in. If I want to find a component in the structure menu, I can simply select it, then right click it in the page workspace, and it'll be highlighted in the tree view. This is true even if we click another component that's a little more deeply embedded in a panel. As you can see, it instantly becomes selected in our structure menu when we right click it. This can be useful for duplicating components or panels or for hiding them, both of which can be done by right clicking them in the structure menu. For example, if I wanted to duplicate our hello world button for some reason and put a second one in our app, I would be able to do that by simply copying it in the tree view menu and then pasting it where I wanted it to show up. We hope this gives you a better understanding of some of the tools at your disposal for quickly laying out your app pages in Akira.